Anyone who has followed my channel knows I do a lot of electronically assisted astronomy events. I did about 90 last year. EAA events are those where you use a camera to transmit a photo from a telescope to an attached television. EAA has many advantages over looking into an eyepiece, including that it's in focus for everyone, everyone can see it simultaneously, glasses don't matter, it's better for the very young, elderly, and disabled, you get color images, and you'll see much more detail in most deep space objects. See my other EAA YouTube video for more information. Generally, in an EAA event, you're showing either broadband targets like galaxies, open clusters, globular clusters, or narrowband targets like planetary and emission nebula. I wanted to know which filters might produce the most optimal results for each different type of target when you're doing an EAA event from a light polluted location. It's important to note at the outset that this should not be seen as advice or recommendations for filters for astrophotography. Astrophotography of deep space objects typically involves many stacked exposures. The total amount of light and information is much higher than will be seen in an EAA event. So for EAA, how do the filters compare and what can you expect in a short exposure? For broadband targets, I chose three conditions. No filter, the Optolong L Enhance filter, and the Atlea RGB triband filter. For planetary and emission nebula, I included the first three, and then I added the Optolong L Enhance filter and the IDAS NBZ filter. Here are the filter curves for each pricing and how they are marketed. The L Pro is seen as better color balance and light pollution suppression for galaxies, reflection nebula, and globular clusters. The Antlia Tri-Band RGB Ultra Filter is for OSC cameras shooting galaxies, reflection nebula, and star clusters. Excellent halo suppression and usable for systems as fast as F2. And the L Enhanced Filter is a dual pass filter which has been designed for DSLR, color CMOS, and monochrome CCD cameras. The convenience and cost effectiveness of this filter allows amateurs to image a rich selection of astronomical images even in bright, heavily light polluted areas. The IDAS NBZ Nebula filter is designed to enhance the contrast of hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 emission nebula while accommodating the filter's spectral shift when used with modern fast optical systems. This dual band filter is ideal for one shot color cameras as well as monocolor astronomical cameras. I used two different telescope configurations. I first used my Celestron C9.25 Edge HD SCT with a Hyperstar at f2.2 and a ZWO183MC Pro camera. For this test, I was in my Bortle 7 backyard and the moon was six days old. Four days later, I used my Tech 140 F7 refractor with an Apex L focal reducer at f4.6 and a ZWO2600MC Pro camera. The moon was now 10 days old. In both cases, I was guiding on an AM5 mount. I tried examples with galaxies, globular and open clusters, planetary nebula, and emission nebula. For the Celestron, I looked at M13, M51, M27, and NGC7000, the North American nebula. With the refractor, I looked at the Wild Duck Cluster, M11, M101, M31, M27, and NGC7000. For each target, my process was to refocus for each filter and start guiding. In most cases, I took the picture when guiding was better than 0.5 arc seconds. In all cases, guiding was better than one arc second. With the Celestron, I took one 60-second sub once guiding was well established. With the Tech, I took one 120-second sub once guiding was well established because it was a slower system. 
I did not take any calibration frames. I use AstroFlat Pro to adjust for flats. AstroFlat Pro is an amazing software plugin for Photoshop, PixInsight, and Affinity Photo. It's the best gradient removal tool I've ever seen. In 99% of the Astro photos I've published, I have not taken any calibration frames. I simply use AstroFlat Pro to create a flat field right after my initial stretch. For the filter test, I photographed galaxies, globulars, and open clusters three ways. First with no filter, next with the L Pro filter, and finally with the Antlia RGB filter. I photographed planetaries and emission nebula five ways. The first three we just discussed, plus the L Enhance filter and the NBZ filter. In post-processing, I process and save the raw untouched frame, a version after a standardized stretch and AstroFlat Pro, a version after background removal, and then I tried two different noise reduction and sharpening plugins just for fun, Topaz Denoise AI and RC Astro's Noise Exterminator to see which one provided the better results. I then made a final processed image from the best result of the data I had for each target. So on to the results. I was frankly surprised at the results I obtained. I fully expected the broadband nebula filters to help a lot in my light polluted location, especially with the moon present. But what I found was they attenuated too much light for, from a short exposure. I'm sure if I took an hour of data per object, I'd get a very different result. To be clear, I'm not making astrophotography filter recommendations here. But in my tests on broadband targets, you can do just as well with no filter as you can with the Optolong L Pro or the Atlea. For planetary and emission nebula, the L Enhance did a good job on both targets. The NBZ filter was clearly superior on the planetary nebula, but attenuated too much light from the North American nebula. Again, to reinforce, I've taken some spectacular photos with the NBZ filter when I take the time to gather enough light. But for, but for short exposures, like are done in EAA, the NBZ is excellent on bright planetaries like M27, but is less effective than the L Enhance on emission nebula. I did not have the opportunity to test the filters on supernova remnants. Another point to consider, the L Pro and L Enhance are designed to operate at the same focus point, or close to the same focus point, so if you use both filters in an EA presentation, you'll save time refocusing after a filter switch. Finally, I should note that RC Astro's Noise Exterminator seemed to do generally a better job in noise reduction and sharpening than Topaz Denoise AI. Remember, this was using just one fixed setting, but it's the one I found works best on Topaz. Your results could be different, especially with different data sets. I should also note that Topaz does a much better job than Noise Exterminator when I'm doing solar photography noise reduction. So going forward, I plan to use the L Pro and L Enhance filters for EAA so I can take advantage of focus parity to save time when jumping to and from broadband and narrowband targets. If you found this helpful, please hit the subscribe button and follow me on Instagram. Thanks for watching.